Hey guys, Ivan here and in this video we got some really interesting news, we're starting with James Hollins here, who got a new coach, yes, another one, gotta collect them all, right? Down below in the comment section guys, please tell me what do you think, how many weeks out of the next show is James Hollins here gonna fire Stefan Kinzel and start working by himself? All jokes aside, uh, James Hollins had started working with uh, Stefan Kinzel, that's the correct way to pronounce his name, but we can call him Stefan or Stefan, it's easier, boss of Outlaw, that's his Instagram name. So, AJ Kelly Roberts posted this photo and he announced here that uh, James started officially working with a new coach, so he says, breaking news, today during breakfast, James Hollins had informed me he has a new coach, the biggest thing in European coaching at the moment, boss of Outlaw, he's coaching Nathan, Martin, Wesley Wissers, and of course it all started with Urs, and James is now in the team, James has informed me that he's letting boss of Outlaw take the lead on this one, by the end of this season expect James to be on the Mr. Olympia stage, now the part that I found very interesting is the part where he says, James has informed me that he's letting Boss of Outlaw take the lead on this one. Is James Hollins here really going to be able to do that? Is he really coachable? Look, the last time James Hollins here let somebody actually take the lead was 2021 when he worked with Patrick Tour. And in my opinion, that was the time when James was at his best in terms of peak. You know, he was dry on stage, full. I think he was as good as he could have been that year. Later, you know, maybe he improved. Yeah, sure, he got bigger. But he wasn't quite nailing it on stage as good as he was when he was working with Patrick. Yeah, they had one really big miss. It was Mr. Olympia, which is basically why James stopped working with Patrick. The things didn't end the proper way, unfortunately, but it is what it is. After that, for a couple of years, he prepped alone, basically. He had some help of his friend Jordan Peters. His wife was also helping him, but basically he was doing it alone without a coach, without somebody exactly telling him what to do. You guys know that he started working with Milos recently, but he stopped listening to Milos at like 6 weeks out, he started working by himself, and honestly, when that collaboration started, I didn't feel like it makes sense, I didn't feel like James is gonna listen to Milos, because I think they have very different philosophies on bodybuilding. Now, I was hoping that maybe James is not gonna do exactly what Milos says throughout the prep, and at the end, he's going to take a peak week and peak for the show properly. But no, he stopped working with Milos six weeks out, so at the end, the final package, it wasn't quite complete, you know, it wasn't dry enough, full enough, he didn't quite nail it. So he needs a good coach who can help him with that, and so far, James worked with so many different coaches, man, I mean, it's hard to go back to a coach who you used to work with, and now we got Stefan Kinzel, a new coach, basically, he started working with uh, these top guys a couple of years ago, starting with Urs, and now he has open guys like Nathan, like Martin recently, and he is killing it, honestly, he's doing a phenomenal job with these guys. You saw what kind of conditioning Martin brought to the Detroit Pro stage where he won his Mr. Olympic qualification, and I think he was improved significantly from the last time we saw him on stage, now as far as conditioning and fullness and that kind of stuff, as far as nailing the peak with Stefan Kinzel, I mean, I think they got it, I think Martin could have been a, a tad bit sharper, not much, but a little bit, a little bit drier, I think he dried out for the finals, but maybe he could be a little bit more conditioned, was this peak any better than the last one at the Texas Pro in 2021? I don't think it was much better, I mean, yeah, Martin is a better bodybuilder now, but I think he picked really well for that show as well, and he was prepped by Branch Warren, but it wasn't really like a full-on coaching, it was more like a mentorship, you know, he was taking guidance from, from Branch, but it wasn't like a classic coach-client relationship, I think, this is how I understood it, so that kind of tells me that anybody can pick Martin to look pretty good, but, but, I listened to what Martin said on Fuad's podcast, and the way they were approaching this entire prep, and especially the peak week, I thought it was pretty like new school, you know, pretty modern, which I like, you know, he was actually eating 
a ton of carbs prior to the show while drinking a whole lot of water as well. He said he was drinking like six, five, four liters of water before the show, the day before the show, so it's crazy that he was so dry, but no wonder he was so full and round. Also, Martin was eating a lot less protein than he was used to during the prep, so kind of similar approach to Patrick Tour, who already had great success with James, so I think this will fit perfectly, honestly. I think if anybody is gonna get maximum out of James, it's gonna be Stefan Kinzel, and also James said that he liked how passionate Stefan is about bodybuilding, which is a very, very important thing, very crucial. So I just honestly hope that James is going to listen, freaking listen, and be coachable for once and truly nail it for the next show and go to the Mr. Olympia at his absolute best. I think he brought his physique to a very high level. It's all about polishing it, finally. And now he's got a good coach, really good coach. Hopefully he will listen and not do things by his own accord. We'll see how this will play out at the end, but I'm pretty optimistic. I think this is gonna turn out great. What do you guys think? Tell me down below. All right, next physique update is very interesting. It's Carlos Thomas Jr. And this is what he looks like right now. Like a freaking ball. His entire physique now is basically forming a circle. I wouldn't say a square, but like a circle. Everything is just popping out. He's so, so round. It's crazy. And he's so freaking massive. I mean, this guy was supposed to compete at the Arnold Classic Brazil. He was really determined. I think he was in Brazil for like six weeks before the show. At the end, unfortunately, he had to pull out. Uh, it was personal reasons. He went back home and obviously, as you can see, he did not stop prepping he looks insane right here as you can see he looks freaking enormous conditioning you know it's good considering that there are no shows in the next uh, four weeks or so so in four five six seven eight weeks he can be shredded but i don't think he's like far off from what he's going to bring because this guy never really comes in super shredded he's always a little bit off I don't know why, is it a coach problem, or is he, like like James Hollins said, too afraid to lose weight and get smaller, I'm not sure, but I'm not expecting him to be, like, crazy ripped, however, size-wise, he's an absolute genetic freak, and I don't know which show he's doing, next show in line is the New York Pro, which I think he might jump into a lot of guys are actually doing that show despite the fact that nick walker is doing it and everybody is battling for the second but i guess a lot of people want that second to nick walker a lot of people are hoping for a call out with nick walker some people believe they can push him i would not be too surprised if they pull nick walker out of the call out and just compare everybody else because i think he's that dominant i don't think there's anybody who can really beat him or really push him but I think it would be a great idea for Carlos to do the show because it's gonna be a short man show. You know, you have Nick Walker at like five foot six, five foot seven at the lead. Then you have Tony Burton, a former 212 guy, so also a short guy. Uh, Martin Fitzwater, also very, very short. And then this guy right here who is probably shorter than all of them. So hopefully somebody like Quinton Araya doesn't jump into the show because he's gonna just destroy the harmony of the show. He's gonna just dwarf everybody and all of these guys are not gonna look that impressive, but they still might beat him, all of them. But, you know, as far as looking impressive on stage next to a guy who is like two heads taller than you, you know, I think these guys are not gonna be too happy if Quinton jumps in. And for us, for fans, it's not ideal. We want to see these guys at the best light possible and if they have a giant standing next to them, basically, even though they might, they probably will beat him, it's gonna look ridiculous, just like Brian Shaw giving a word to Sean Clarida at a Mr. Olympia, so not ideal, but, you know, we'll see. Now, as far as uh, Carlos Thomas, again, he looks impressive, crazy from the front. Could he push Nick Walker from the front, you know, possibly? Yeah, like, from the front, he looks as big, just as big, just as thick. Not as conditioned, he won't be as conditioned, but as far as size, he can stand, he can hang, for sure. But only from the front, and I guess from the sides. From the back, it's not gonna be even funny, because this guy just looks bad from the back. Like, he has no back, no lower lats whatsoever. His entire lower back area looks like he never trained it once in his life. Like, he never did one hyperextension 
or like any low row or like lat pull down like his lower back looks like it was never trained ever and you know that conditioning you know he can get away with it from the front but if his glutes are looking soft and his hamstrings have no separation and his lower back is holding water and fat it's not gonna be a good look so i probably have everybody like martin uh, Antonio Burton beating this guy, maybe even Quinton Araya if he jumps in, I don't know who else is doing the show, but, you know, even though uh, this guy is insane from the front, I think these back shots are just hurting him way too much, can he do something about it, I have no idea, what I see right here is not looking very good, it's not looking improved, and it's gonna cost him a lot, especially in this lineup, Nick has great back, uh, Quinton Raya has a great back, Martin has an enormous back, so realistically he stands no chance, he would be a great addition to the lineup, but as far as winning the show, or even placing second next to Nick, that's not gonna happen, I don't think so. Alright, next up we got a little back update uh, from Derek Lansford, I mean he's just walking there, but you can see basically how big, how wide, how thick his back is, and you know, it looks like a deformity, like, it looks ridiculous, I mean, this is just insane, he doesn't even look like a human from behind, but we all kind of know that, his back was, and it is, and it will be, his by far strongest body part, it's one of the best, one of the greatest backs of all time, really, I mean, just look at this freaking weight and thickness, and like, how much everything is popping out, I'm sure he has a crazy pump here as well, uh, you know, as far as him making progress compared to last year, I, I don't know, I don't think he made a ton of progress, again, he doesn't look significantly bigger, like, does he need to make progress, well, obviously not in the back, the back doesn't need to grow anymore, legs could make more progression, so he can actually die down and not lose the size of the legs uh, while he's getting his uh, front whole front part uh, shredded, like uh, quads, chest, uh, even abs, uh, shoulders from the front, so yeah, I think he could get bigger legs and just get overall bigger so he can afford to lose more size and do more aggressive prep, aggressive cutting, but as far as back, no, he doesn't need any more growth, and right now it's looking ridiculous, uh, will he be able to defend the title against the Hari Japan? I don't think so, I don't see that kind of progression, if he grew like another 15 pounds, then maybe, but the way he is right now, you know, he's probably gonna look very similar to what he looked like last year, and if Hadi comes in super shredded, yeah, I don't have Derek repeating and defending his title. What do you guys think? Well, whatever you guys think, make sure to let me know down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, and for more content like this, guys, please subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching, see you soon, guys, all the best, and bye-bye.